Three simple letters that make the hair on the back of my neck stand up. And uh, if you don't like this country, you can get the f*** out. Again, positive mood today. So if you want to get a steel done, I have a guy that you guys probably haven't heard of, but I tell you what, it's not always about who's the most popular. That's for damn sure. Uh, but his name's Robin. He's not local to me, but uh, here's his, I'll put a screenshot up of his, his contact info. And he does my build. He does the same build that I do. We share information and uh, I've kind of like, you know, helped him out and stuff. Because I do like to help these up and comers. And I don't recommend just anybody. This guy does killer work. And he's one of these guys that, like I was with, with Gordy, you know, he was, when I had a guy like that that was willing to mentor me, shit, you think I was cocky and telling anybody what to do? Hell no. I kept my mouth shut and I listened. I picked up every little bit of information I could and, uh, he was the same way. He, you know, he didn't, he had no ego. You can't have an ego if you're trying to learn with these, you know, saw builders, they're all egomaniacs. Uh, I, of course, I'm not an egomaniac. I would never, that's ridiculous. But, uh, so it's hard to have a conversation with one of them because everybody thinks they know best. And that's something I wish would change. And that's kind of where the haters come in and they just throw a wrench in everything because a lot of us have, you know, we share the same thoughts, we have the same goals, we want the same thing, and then you get these guys that come in and they just, they make everybody feel like shit, they get everybody all riled up, and am I going to be the only one that says it? I mean, come on guys, everybody's like, oh, don't bother me and all that. It it does too. When somebody just comes up and just trashes your work and shit, it, hell yeah, it bothers you. It, uh, I don't want to say it hurts your feelings, but it like bruises your ego and it just kind of like... Me, I just get mad. Uh, it ain't about getting upset. It's like I get pissed. So that's why I want them to go. That's why they need to get the hell on out of here. And that's why I, I fire rounds at them every time I see them lurking around. But uh, so, yeah, Robin is a good dude. I would not recommend just anybody. Now, if you want to echo 2511, Nick at Redbeard Saws, you probably heard of him. Uh, he makes some awesome filters too. Uh, all kinds of products actually. But he will build you the craziest little echo 2511 and uh other than that there's ryan at mpi he's on instagram he does really good builds but i'm thinking he's pretty slammed uh robin won't take on like just old beat up used saws but he'll take on a new steel i don't he probably won't do a husky but hopefully this don't blow his freaking phone up because he's the same it's the same thing you can only do so many builds a guy can only do so many a day and uh, other than that, uh, I should have wrote this down like in notes because I wanted to go over a bunch of stuff. But uh, okay, so reputation. If you are thinking about going with a certain builder, you feel free to ask me. Uh, publicly, I'm not going to say certain things about certain people just because that's out of you know respect and you know mutual respect. Whether I agree with what somebody does, they're in the same business I am. They have their they have the reasons they do their thing. They've been, some of them have been doing it longer than me even. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that somebody's right, somebody's wrong. That's not me. I'm talking about in general, there's a lot of shitty saw builders out there and your reputation is key. Now, if a bunch of people say the guy does good work, that is a huge sign that you got someone that you can go with because it's it's hard to get anybody to give anybody a compliment, right? So if you get a bunch of people that are like, yeah, this guy does great work, you know, all that. Dude, I mean, I wouldn't even hardly look any further. The opposite. If you hear a whole bunch of people say, even if this guy's popular or not, you know, you hear a bunch of people that are like, no, he does shitty work and all that. I hate to say it. Odds are he probably does shitty work. You know, uh, a spade a spade. You know, it's, it is what it is. And uh, other than that, if you've never heard of him, don't go with him. Um, I, I don't know how other people run their business. Again, this is my channel. I'm going to say what I feel, but 
I wouldn't send anybody money up front. That's just me. Some of these guys may want money up front. That's their business. That's their deal. I don't ever ask for money up front. Uh, you know, for one, I either have bought the saw, it's my saw, and they're paying me to build it. If they back out, it, what's, it, what's it matter? I bought the saw anyway. Uh, if it's their saw and they sent it to me, why would I have them pay money up front? Because I have seen a really shady couple of people that have had a whole bunch of saws that they didn't own that were other people's, and they asked for money up front, and then they just took off. Talk about ballsy, because, you know, guys that are dropping... Douglas fir uh, out in the coast like I don't know if I'd want to piss those guys off so yeah so I would be careful make sure when you have payment you do like some sort of electronic payment I wouldn't I wouldn't feel comfortable sending cash or check I don't feel comfortable even taking cash or check I will but it's be cautious if if it doesn't seem right in your gut it probably isn't just wait what's what's the hurry to get a saw built I do these videos so I can help you guys. Maybe you can build, you can do it yourself. You know what I mean? If you're careful, you can do it yourself. If you're mechanical enough and you're careful. If you've never torn a saw apart and can't adjust a carburetor and all that, can't do a carb rebuild, don't even try it because you're going to have to do diagnosing and tuning after. You, If you have zero mechanical ability and don't know the ins and outs of these, these engines, do not port your saw. It's going to be the worst mistake you ever made. As far as saws go, probably not the worst mistake you ever made. But you know what I mean? So if, you, if you're if talking to a guy, you, you send him your saw. Then you send him 600 bucks, And then I'll say, okay, well, we got shipping. And, all that. and then you send him. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I'm just saying. Now, on the flip side of it, no reputable saw builder is going to ship the saw back without getting payment. But at that point, you've either built a relationship and you trust each other or... You got some sort of electronic payment that's confirmed. Um, you know, that's why Venmo can get a little sketchy. If you use PayPal, it's got that buyer protection. Like a lot of this, for PayPal, a lot of the saws that I'll ship out, it used to be like this. Now I do enough business on it, it doesn't, it doesn't care anymore. But usually the guy that sends your saw out, you send him payment. He doesn't get that payment. If he's got a business account, the, he, they wait until you get the saw and then. They want to make sure that tracking says it's there because you tie the tracking info and everything in. So if you're worried about it, go with PayPal. Uh, Venmo, you, there's no buyer back, buyer protection. It's going to cost interest, but guys that are reputable and do good work charge money. You, you know, it's, if you got a build by me, it ain't cheap. If you got a build by some of these guys that know what they're doing, it ain't cheap. If someone says it's $200 to port a saw, he's either a guy that likes to do it and he could do phenomenal work, but, you know. But he likes to do it, and that's that. But there's a lot of guys that they they just don't know what to charge because they're just talking out of their ass. Two hundred bucks is you're not getting a a, a good job for two hundred bucks, guaranteed. Uh, let's talk about these saws. If I think of anything else, I'll, I'll mention it. So this is Guilty of Treasons uh, Jacobs two sixty one. This is a really cool saw to me. This saw did a lot for my business. Uh, for one, Jacob reached out to me when I was at Nobody on Instagram. And obviously, he was popular. That helped me out. But Eric Trump saw this saw. And obviously, Eric Trump loves his country. Uh, we're not going to talk about politics here. I don't want to hear it in the comments. I'm just talking about Eric because I did build a saw for him. And he was just the most normal, cool guy ever. I still message him. It's crazy. Like, I'll message him on Instagram and... He literally will talk to me about what's up, not even about the saws, but uh, one of the craziest experiences ever. Like, I couldn't even believe it when he messaged me. I was like, I've seen the blue check mark by his name and stuff, and millions of followers. I'm like, like, this can't be. Like, I thought somebody was playing a joke on me for like two days. And uh, I even said that when I talked to him the first time. I'm like, this is a joke, dude. You got me. Like, I, I can't even, I can't even pretend like you didn't get me. Like, it was, it was kind of crazy, but. Uh, now it's just like some dude I message if I want to, but uh, he saw this saw because of the you know of Jacob and the American flag deal, and I built him a 261. So uh, I've done multiple saws for Jacob now. I've done the Limb Reaper for him, the crazy uh, custom saw that they had glow in the dark on it and all powder coated and stuff. If you haven't seen Jacob Rogers' videos, he's guilty of treason. I doubt I'll get him any traffic, but uh, he gets me a lot of traffic. He does uh, videos of mine. So if you haven't seen his channel and you want to see more of my 
videos like in in depth saw porting i built a 200t from scratch restored it did all the porting all that uh, and he filmed it and edited it so it was way better than what i put out but check his channel out yeah i'm sure you guys all know who he is but uh yeah you'll see my nitrous on there you'll see a lot of stuff that i do over there and uh what else can i say he's been, he's been using the crap out of this saw and it's been running great and he's always wanted a three-quarter wrap handle and now he's got one. And man, is it frustrating that it did not. I've never ordered a wrap handle that didn't come with this piece that goes right here. This is off of a different saw, but well, how crazy is that? And this is the most expensive wrap handle I've ever bought, ever. And it comes without that piece. Like, what the hell? But so we're going to have to get that, but it's on there. And if you ever do a, a handle swap like this, like if you want to, I've put them on 260s, I've done all kinds of these handle swaps. I need the the suspension spring for right here, the anti-vibe, and you want to make sure that your your chassis is is flexible like that and it's centered. If you force this handle in one way, like if you're, you know, I had to cut a lot of stuff. I had to make spacers out of his old handle. I had to cut his old handle apart to make make a spacer right here. And on the bottom, I used uh, the suspension and the bracket basically off his old handle and uh, it was pretty involved actually now I just need this something between here I'm gonna have to I'll modify something I'm thinking and I have a a spring off of a a 460 no a 441 and so like this one this would go on like this you know and then the spring goes to well here's a, here's an old 261 I'll show you what I did yeah when did I think of this so, well, it doesn't have the, so the spring, can you guys see what I'm doing here? Yeah, the spring threads onto here, and then it goes there, and it keeps the support right there. And obviously, this handle is different, because this is aluminum. That's one nice thing about this handle swap, is you can have an aluminum handle now, along with the three-quarter wrap. But uh, I had to have a spacer here, because otherwise it's too tight to the side, and it brings it too far this way. You start getting tight in here. You, you're pinching your cover so now the way it is now everything is lined up perfectly it's dead straight the saw is as straight as it is in the frame as this one and this is the stock handle and uh on the bottom here so this handle is all plastic all of this is plastic except for that metal spring so you can see how that sits in there so i had to basically cut this off and modify it and i got it in there but it's the sucker is on there and uh Good to go. I just need that stupid little piece. We'll talk about this filter too because a lot of people don't know about these filters and what actually, uh, what they actually do for your saw. Now, this is the stock paper filter, which you, know, you guys know I don't like these. I will not pour the saw and send it out with, with the stock fil filter on it. It has to have some sort of foam uh, filter, oilable filter like Max Flow, Uni, Redbeard Saws, West Coast Saw. But the Redbeard Saw filters, Check this out. This is the, the baffle that's on a, a 261 stock. This is what goes on right here. And then your, your uh, air filter turns onto it with like a, a quarter turn lock. So, oh shit. Put a new fan up today. I forgot to put the bolts in. <laughs> but, uh, or a cover for my exhaust fan. I'm not editing that out. This is real life around here. So this would sit in here like that. That's blocking a ton of intake air, especially when you pour the saw and mod the muffler, you need to get more air to it. Uh, this would be all choked off pretty much. Now when you take this off, you basically got an intake stack. Isn't that crazy? Uh, and it goes on with a hose clamp and basically pressure fit. They don't leak either. These have been tested like crazy. In fact, I'll throw Jacob under the bus. This is his old filter. We cleaned it and oiled it, but when he was here and we went out to cut, we're like, I was like, yeah, let's check it. Let's check the saws over. And, you know, I did a recoil for him. He just needed a new rope and whatnot. And, dude, his air filter was so packed with sawdust and shit. It was unbelievable. It was like a mountain on top of it. And uh, you know, it's, it's all in love, Jacob. I've probably been the same damn way. Uh, but the filter did its job, dude. I, I've always had 100% confidence in these filters. But after seeing that, it's almost like 110%. It's 
unbelievable. I mean, as long as there's not any debris on this side of filter, you're good to go. This side could look like a mountain, an ant hill. And I've said that too about people that don't want to get into these foam style filters because they think you got to clean them all the time and stuff like that. Don't tell anybody I told you this, but there's like production guys that go weeks and even a month without cleaning them even. Or they'll take, like, they'll get so full of stuff to take like a, their driver's license, just scrape it off and keep going. They're phenomenal filters. I'm not suggesting you do that though. But uh, yeah, the old, uh, whenever you put the top covers on these 261s and 362s and all that, 462, I always put it in the start position. So that's enough on this saw. Um, it does have a, nobody noticed that when I did this build. It has a, a larger side cover on it. Doesn't have captive bar nuts, but he wanted more protection for the, you know, bucket work. And it does sit down further. The chip flap is a little bigger. And uh, there we go, the 261. Okay, we're going to end it there. I was going to talk about this 064, but you know what? This is a pretty cool saw. This deserves its own video anyway. And uh, once I popped the recoil off, I started seeing some issues that I got to address. And it would have just got all sloppy and all over the place. So... I am going to keep posting videos just because uh, it seems like the algorithm for me is kind of jumping right now, so that's awesome. Hopefully these videos can uh, stay on that path, and like I said, if I can get this thing to blow up, I'll do all kinds of crazy saws and uh, you know make YouTube money, baller status. So I hope the video helped a bunch of you that are looking for builds to get done. You know, like I said, Nick Stockle, Redbeard Saws. Find him on Instagram, YouTube. He might even have TikTok. And uh, Robin, I put his info up. And uh, Robin, if you get a whole bunch of messages and you don't know what the hell's going on, uh, you'll figure it out sooner or later. Uh, tell Robin I said hi if you if you reach out to him. He's a good dude. And, you know, just blue collar, salt of the earth, does a damn good job, takes pride in his work, that kind of guy. So uh, I'd love to help him out. And hopefully you guys, you know, Get a build done by him. I'm not one of these guys that says, like, there should not be a cult mentality with, with saw builders. That's the most ridiculous thing. Uh, have a have builds from a bunch of different builders. I think it's cool like that, you know. But, yeah. Good luck with uh, finding somebody, wh whatever route you go. And until next time, stay rowdy, my friends.